Okay, today I'm going to show you how to use DVD Fab. Well, this program is used primarily for, for converting stereo 3D to side by side or over under 3D. Well, you want to first grab your ISO file and drag it in. You can mount, but it's not really necessary. It's an extra step that you just really don't need to do. Just dragging your ISO file on here is simple enough. Under your sub picture, you can add or remove subtitles that you wish to have in the file by either checking or unchecking the boxes on the left. Same goes with your audio language. Over here in this window, this is where all the primary video is. This is the main video right here. You want to make sure that this box is checked. Come over here to the 3D Ripper window and most people prefer MKV as their playback uh, container. So just make sure you, this is highlighted. Well not really highlighted, just make sure it's on this. You want to come down here to the profile tab and make sure that it says MKV H264 Audio Copy 3D. If it doesn't say this, then you obviously have something over here different than MKV. Now go into your video effects settings. The program automatically defaults to half side by side. Over here under the source aspect ratio, make sure the middle is checked. Come up here to crop. This is entirely up to you if you want to crop black bars or not. Most people prefer to crop black bars on the top and the bottom, but I say what's the point when the TV is going to automatically add them anyways. Now there are a few movies out there that do have black bars on the left and right hand sides. I don't know why the studios do this, but you need to make sure that you remove those for sure. Go over to the 3D tab, and this is the 3D output format. You can choose anaglyph or split screen. On split screen, you got the side by side, or the top and bottom, and you also got half and full. This is obviously half side by side, and that's 960 by 1080p per eye. I know this program says left eye size, but that is incorrect. For a full, you click on that, and it changes this window. Now it's 1920 by 1080 per eye. Same goes for the top and bottom. It'll change to one on top and one on bottom, and they're both 1920 by 1080 per eye. Now most of you passive users would prefer a half over under, which is 1920 by 540 per eye. Okay, if passive is what you have, and this is the output of choice, let's go ahead and click OK. Now you want to go to the Edit button. Up here you do not need to change anything except if you want to add a file name. That's entirely up to you. I just leave these things alone. Doesn't really matter. Down here at the video format, if you click on this, you can try and do a two-pass encode, but I have only been able to successfully do this one time. Every other time has always failed. Great, and the fix file size it doesn't matter which one of these you choose because it's all going to turn out the same way pretty much I'm going to grab the slider and slide it all the way over the maximum bit rate is always going to be 30,000 I've never seen it go above this and no matter which one of these you select it doesn't change anything now down here at the sub picture this is where you can hard burn or choose to output subtitle files separately. Now for movies like Avatar and the subtitles for the foreign navy that you can't understand, while the MPAA doesn't include these on as default in the movies for some reason, they used to hard burn them but they don't anymore. And if you forget to turn on that file, well, you're not going to understand them. Well, this eliminates that by hard burning them. Th this allows you to either put them out as a file or to hard burn them, just as well as regular subtitles. Go ahead and click OK. 
and now you're ready to start. I went ahead and did one earlier and I messed it up. Go ahead and click yes to overwrite. And if you notice that uh, this says G CUDA GPU acceleration for video encoding enabled. Well, in order to be able to use CUDA acceleration, you have to have an NVIDIA graphics card that is a GeForce 8 or better. ATI cards do not have CUDA. CUDA is not an ATI uh, developed uh, chip. Now you do not have to have an ATI card or an NVIDIA graphics card in order to do the encoding, but it is highly recommended that you get one with CUDA capabilities because it will cut your encoding time by half or approximately by half. As you can see here, it's only going to take approximately 50 minutes to do this. Now, if I did not use CUDA acceleration, it would probably take two or more hours to complete this task. CUDA acceleration drastically speeds this process up. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. And the video window will pop up, or not the video window, but the folder, the output folder will pop up and display your uh, encoded video. Always double click on these things and play them back to make sure that they worked right. As you can see, all the settings are correct and I have outputted a half over under video clip. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to right click on and choose Media Info. I wanted to show you this. This was encoded in a high profile level 5.1. Well, this profile is incompatible with the majority of the 2D and 3D TVs that are in production right now. There is very, very, very few TVs that support that profile level. And in order to be able to correct this and play this clip back on those TVs, it will have to be re-encoded with a, another piece of software. Well, this concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.